as we just recently found out, there are some Michigan lawmakers that recently introduced the library in every school bill. And here to talk about it, joining us, we have Michigan Senator Rosemary Bayer. How you doing, Senator Rosemary Bayer? Doing great. Thank you, Kevin. It's wonderful to be here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us on your very busy day. So what we have here essentially is Senate Bill 741, 2, and 3, collectively known as the library in every school legislation, aiming to ensure that every public school in Michigan has a library staffed by state certified librarians. First and foremost, explain a little bit more what this is and why this is important to you. Oh, great. Thank you. I'm really excited to be talking about it. I'm excited about the bills. We have some other things that go with the bills, even I can tell you about. Um, I, you know, I grew up with books. My grandmother was a librarian in Ferndale, and we used to go there, and she would actually keep the ripped up, written on books for us. We would read everything, you know. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's hugely important to me personally. But that being said, what we know is that libraries in school with librarians in school have a huge impact on the success at school. And mm. it's achievement, you know, it's, it's graduation, it's grades, it's all that. It's also equity because every, reading is the number one factor in success at school. So if you can't read, you are going to have trouble from that point on, right? That's why that third grade thing was so critical, right? Everybody knows that if you aren't reading by third grade, we got to help. We got to help in a big way, right? So we have a lot of extra resources to make sure that anybody who is struggling at that point gets caught up right then. Because if you wait till fifth grade or seventh grade, it's, it's so much, much, much harder. You ask any adult who's going back later to learn how to read how much more difficult it is at that stage. So we're really focused on literacy overall. And then there's a lot of data, a lot of studies that show that literally specifically school libraries and school mm -hmm. librarians are a huge mm -hmm. part of that impact. So we wanted to put it back. I, I know that I've been in schools, I visited schools where the library wasn't even there anymore. It was an empty room or it was filled with stuff. It's not being used as a library. And I think that's a tragedy. So there's other pieces we can talk about too. Do you have specific questions? No, absolutely. There's so much running through my mind with this because first and foremost, this is one of those things that you don't even realize until you think about it. And it's I saw so back and I was like, wow, I do remember being in some schools where there were no official library. actual library. And you would think that's where a library should be in a that's school. So and I know that, you know, there's a lot more shift to online content, right? Correct. That doesn't mean you don't still need librarians and the opportunity okay. to focus on literacy, on being able to read. And the other piece, so librarians themselves are a huge part of it because they bring expertise, right? They bring right. The, the skills that are needed. They also bring new technology, right? Librarians are technologists anymore, right? They bring that new technology. One of the things that started this discussion here in the, in the Michigan Senate about needing to do this is my... Uh, uh, one of my constituents, I live in West Bloomfield, by the way. I love that baseball, that basketball team that was on right before me. <laughs> um, anyway, back to the reading. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the thing with librarians are we found there's a huge need. I have a, a constituent in our district who wrote a couple of books about online literacy about understanding using social media, how to do that effectively, and how to tell mm. when something you're reading is a story or a real thing? Is it truth or fiction? Right. How do you know? How do you know? How do you find the sources of things? How do you get down to the bottom of it to say, okay, it was entertaining, but I know that it's really just a story. And so we're building curriculum. So this is all in budget. So none of this is approved mm -hmm. yet, right? We're in the process of putting all the pieces together right. and we're trying to put it in the budget for next year. Um, a, a, a curriculum development to help those librarians specifically focus on that. It will also give teachers the opportunity to use, there'll be a class, teachers have to do continuing education credits every year. So there'll be a class that they can choose to use that, that shows them because online content is in every kind of class anymore. It, it's always, it's your papers you're writing, research you're doing. So all right. teachers should understand how to make sure to include that in their content. So when, so that students understand when they're working online, if you're writing a report, 
you better make sure that's a factual thing as opposed to somebody's made up story. It's not going to get you very good right. grade on your report, right? So um, all those pieces together gives them all the opportunity to, to keep up with that technology and make sure that we're making the best use of those online resources. It's a huge piece of it. We got to have all of those things. No, absolutely. Uh, and joining us, we have Michigan Senator Rosemary Bayer representing West Bloomfield talking about this library in every school legislation that she helped introduce as of recently. And this is addressing, like you said, the declining literacy rates, significant decrease in the number of school librarians employed statewide. Uh, there was a decrease in the number of school librarians, 73% between 2000 and 2016, according to sources. Now, with this with this legislation, um, I understand in every school that that's the thing in every school. So, with that being said, we're talking about different school districts, different size schools and students. And will this legislation account for the different size schools and and in different fundings? And, and I know you spoke about the funding a little bit, but can you get a, a, into that? How you know the different size libraries and the different schools may fluctuate. Yeah, and there is, you know, kind of laid out in the legislation a little map of sizes, right? So when you're really, really small, the requirement to have a library diminishes, right? As you get smaller and smaller, if you only have 100 kids in your school, maybe you're going to share a library with a neighboring school or the next nearest school. So, so there's different ways to look at it. We're trying to be reasonable. Um, and oftentimes, so those bills just got introduced uh, recently, there's a, there's always the opportunity for adjustments as the bills go through the process here in the legislature. Um, they've just been introduced. They've not had a committee hearing yet. So we have to go and that opens up the opportunity for corrections, fixes, improvements, all that kind of stuff that goes all the time when we do new legislation. And this is kind of a big deal. So we want to make sure that everybody knows that we're talking about doing this, that we're taking this very seriously, and we're willing to put resources to it. So here's your chance to speak out loud. We know that the librarians are really excited about this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that it's a big deal for us statewide. I think it's going to make a big difference. Yeah, and and I think more importantly, um, see, the thing is, a lot of people, like we discussed before, we're in a digital age, and kids in our days are just phone tablets, computers for the most part. I wouldn't even say desktop as much. It's really electronics that are more mobile than what these kids are, 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 are on. So it's the focus you spoke on a little bit, a little bit more of the technology side too. Can you give a little bit more insight into the technology investments with this legislation also? Will there be iPads, computers, and things of that nature? So well, that's not in this part of the budget, but there are okay. other places where that kind of equipment is uh, opportunities for funding. And the main thing that we continue to try to do, I mean, this current school year, um, it, we raised up the... Uh, the foundation allowance, right? The spending allowance for per student that goes into every school district. We raised that up last year. It's there's another raise up uh, in the current draft budget, right? We keep focusing on anything we can do, and we're we're getting pretty close to ten thousand per student, which is a pretty big number. I mean, it's it's increased a lot in the last five years. So. We're, we're proud of that. We know we still have a long way to go. And the nice thing about that allowance, basically it goes into the district and local districts, some have a lot of technology, some do not. And they mm -hmm. may do it. They get to use their own methods and adjustments to how they spend that money, right? They have to pay teachers, that's a given. Um, yeah. How many teachers? What subjects do we add? I mean, all those things are local decisions. So that gives them a lot of flexibility. Do we need more technology or not? It's a big focus for all of us because we know that's how we live now. We need to make sure that every kid, everywhere, this is another equity piece of the conversation, right? If you don't have access all the time, mm -hmm. you're losing. You're losing out. Somebody else is online all the time keeping up, and you don't have that opportunity. That's not fair. So it's it's really important to make sure we do that. No, I, I grew up. My mother used to take me to the library growing up. We would go there, find different books on different subjects. We would utilize the computer because we didn't have access to one at home at the time. And then I also worked at a library when I went to college. So I, I spent about four years there. I used to take books home that they were going to discard. So I appreciate the art and the science of the library 
and the librarian. Getting into the librarian specifically, why is it so important, important to have a state certified librarian? Why not just a regular staff member or volunteer parent to come and oversee the library? Well, you do actually want someone who has the skills, right? So we could have, mm -hmm. and we probably, I would imagine many school districts do have volunteers come in and help but not lead the instruction, not lead the skill development, not lead the, the things that actually are what are the professional skills that those librarians bring. Now, one of the things that we are doing, um, and Wayne State is a big piece of the work here, but to uh, create a kind of an accelerated certification program so that teachers who want to become librarians could do that quicker. Right, get another opportunity to build up our stock of certified librarians through that kind of program. So we're, we'll continue to support those at universities wherever we can as, as, as the teachers do their uh, their uh, ongoing uh, course credits. That's one of the that's a really good choice for them to be able to do that. So it's exciting work, especially now. It's just going to get better and better. Absolutely. And I appreciate the insight and information so far. Michigan Senator Rosemary Bayer joining us. Um, any last words, any additional information, important information that the residents should know, anything that we can do to help out in the time being? So, I, you know, kind of back to your story, right, when you were a kid, you know, yes. having a librarian in our family made a big difference, right? I'm one of six kids. We would all pile in the station wagon. I'm a lot older than you, right? So we didn't have computers and <laughs> have phones and all that. We would all pile in the car. We would go to the Romeo Library and um, mm -hmm. check out as many books. And they actually got to know us. They would let us take extra books. But everybody read all the books. So even though my older brother was, you know, eight years older than my younger sister, he read all the books. I mean, everybody read everybody else's books. And because there isn't really no other success factor more important than reading. Doesn't matter what you're reading. Read the box. My brother would read the box, the cereal box. Yeah. How loud? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no. read yeah. it. Just read it. You know, just mm -hmm. see what's on the box. So that's my advice always. Yeah. Read to your kids. Let them read back to you. See how many times you have to read that book before they can read it to you. Get it out there. So that, is, that, is, that is great advice and a great worry. It, it all starts at home. If you can at least bring that influence at home, your children, even if there is a library at the school, they will at least draw interest to that. Because if it's not necessarily an interest that the kid has in general and the parents aren't influencing that, then a library in school may not even do it, do any good Absolutely at all. Absolutely true. I mean, if you're sitting there reading the cereal box out loud, guess what they're going to do the next day? They're going to read the cereal, cereal box, box, right? I mean, right. that's what happens. <laughs> Kids want to be like us. We know that. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much again, Michigan Senator Rosemary Bayer, joining us on the Splash Live, talking about the library in every school bill. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Kevin. It was a delight.